Hello, I'm Hadi Heydari. I'm professor of nanoelectronics at James Bond School of Engineering, University of Glasgow. I'm leading the microelectronics lab, MILAB, consists of 25 researchers working on medical electronics and also quantum computing. So, in the first domain of medical electronics, we are developing nanotechnologies for brain and muscle machine interfaces. So, from brain implantable device to wearable sensors that can detect the muscle activity. On the other side, also, we are working on the nanotechnology, developing the cryocemos for the quantum computing. We are collaborating with large uh, partners, with large uh, collaborators through the European project and national uh, UK project. So, for example, we are uh, collaborating in a Hermes cross-brain European project with the very large um, collaborators and also involving in the quantum computing with two large Innovate UK grants, so which we are involved with the multiple industries who are leading the future of quantum computers. So the most interesting part about the our group is the multidisciplinary. Um, our group members are uh, from multiple countries, you know, over 10 countries, um, and also we have a very good gender balance in our lab with the engaging over 10 female engineers in our lab. So the most interesting thing about the working in Glasgow and generally Glasgow University is working with the world-class um, environment, world-class uh, facilities, technologies, and uh, world-class collaborators. Our group is doing the world-class nano and microelectronics for um, medical and quantum technology. We are welcoming the students from all around the world to our group and enjoying the world-class environment at Glasgow and Scotland. And now I'm passing to my students to explain some of the research in our group. Hi, my name is Eve and I am a third year PhD student with one year left to go and I work in the MeLab group under Professor Hadi Hadari. So my project is about biomedical implants, specifically um, electrodes that will go into the brain. And I'm part of a larger project with lots of European universities called the Hermes Project. And our goal is to create a system to predict and prevent epileptic seizures, and hopefully one day try to cure epilepsy. So my part is the fabrication of the neural probe. So I work both in this lab and in the James Watt Nanofabrication Centre to make these miniaturised probes. So long story short, um, it has to be very small. It has to be made of materials that won't damage the brain. And it has to have the capability to inject enough current into the brain to make some changes to the neurons and change their behaviour and also do some recording so that we can investigate the behaviour of these neurons before, during, after an epileptic seizure. So I don't know if you maybe want to take a closer look at what I've got. Um, this here is an example of one of the probes and they're in various stages of fabrication, um, beginning with just my metal layer and then these are ready to be released and made into something like this, where you have the tiny little probe on the end um, and then it goes to a wider PCB so that we can do some experiments, uh, take a look at the characterization and make sure that the probe is working properly. So I have a year left and my hope is to do some in vivo tests with these probes where I go to Italy and our collaborators will implant them into a rat brain and we'll see how it goes. Hi, I'm Megan. I'm a member of MeLab group under Professor Hadi Haider's supervision. Actually, I'm a medical doctor and I started my new career as an engineer uh, in this big group. Uh, so what I'm, uh, what, I, uh, what I'm doing is that I'm, uh, I want to see that the magnetic field that is generated by muscle contraction 
Uh, because the conventional electrical measurement has some disadvantages that this magnetic measurement outperforms this electrical measurement. Uh, the most important thing is that the magnetic measurement is contactless and this is the inspiration that makes us to go to this magnetic measurement. So what I'm doing in my first year PhD student, I'm trying to simulate magnetic field around the muscle membrane to see uh, how, it, uh, how, uh, how it works and what we should do to make our sensors better. And in my second step, I'm going to validate the sensor that already my uh, colleague has, uh, has made it and uh, to benchmark uh, this, uh, this new sensor with the commercial one that's called OPM. But if I want to show you that what I'm doing for my simulation, this is the Simple Life platform. And as you see, there is a model, uh, simulation and analysis uh, sub-environment. So what I'm doing is if these are, each of these are muscle cells, so I put current into them like the actual muscle cell, and I measure, as you see here, I measure the magnetic field direction and strength around the muscle cell and uh, around the skin to see how it works in the physiology environment. Thank you. Hello, my name is Maria, and I'm a second year PhD student at the University of Glasgow, working in the microelectronics lab under Professor Heydari. And my work is in implantable neural microelectronics, working for the Hermes project, which is a European Union uh, funded project, working to solve uh, and treat uh, epilepsy. As my colleague Eve mentioned before, we are working with many different universities across Europe, mainly Italy, Denmark, and Spain. And my project is going to be focusing on the implantation as well as the integration of flexible electronics. What I've been doing over the past couple of months since I started my PhD is working on creating resorbable deafeners to aid in the implantation of a neural probe that Eve has created. So as you can see here, I've got a couple of my solutions that I've made. And what I've, I'm going to be making or trying to make is helping our flexible probe to be stiff enough to be able to be inserted into the brain during our surgery, which will be taking place in Modena, Italy, in the coming months. So hopefully, we'll be able to go along there and help our neuroscientists in Italy and with the techniques that we do at the James Watt Nanofabrication Center, as well as here in our 463 James Watt Lab, uh, we will be able to create the stiffeners and then moving on towards the future, We'll also be able to create an integrated flexible circuit that will be able to be inserted and implanted into the brain. Hello, my name is uh, Christos Jagulu, and I'm a research associate at the University of Glasgow with Microelectronics Lab in the field of quantum computing. Um, quantum computing is revolutionizing computers the way we know them, um, building a lot faster systems. Um, but they have to work at low temperatures. At the University of Glasgow, we are designing circuits for this new field, and uh, we have the capabilities in the lab to design from simple circuits, this is just a, a digital gate, to more complex circuits of a whole system on chip design, to chips, microchips, which are then sent to foundries, and they create these microchips here, which are quite small, they're smaller than my thumb. When we have these chips, we introduce them on our uh, measurement setup over here, where um, we can uh, use our probes. This is a probe station, and uh, we can measure transistor characteristics that we can then use to build models that will help us design in very, very low temperatures where these circuits operate for quantum computing. And after we connect it to the setup, uh, then we use uh, our instruments and uh, we get uh, these characteristics, which uh, we are, in this case, comparing them to our simulations with the software I showed you before. 
in order for quantum computers to work, uh, we load our circuit inside a grid like this. This is a very big grid, and it's called a dilution refrigerator, and it can reach temperatures down to millikelvin, which is very close to the absolute zero. So something this small, in order to work um, with uh, quantum computing, you have to load it into something this big. So this field is um, progressing, and uh, research is aiming at making this smaller, and for people in the future to be able to have something around their office space. 